we've heard repeated concerns uh, that Wagner and uh, groups that are linked to it uh, manufacture or exploit insecurity. Uh, they threaten stability. They undermine good governance. Uh, they rob countries of mineral wealth. Uh, they violate human rights. And we've heard that and seen that again and again. If you go back to 2017, uh, Wagner forces have deployed to the Central African Republic. They've deployed to Mozambique, to Mali, uh, to Libya. And at the same time, we've seen disinformation campaigns that are furthering the exploitative goals that Wagner and its founder have quite literally across the continent uh, of Africa. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Is our partners in Africa tell us that they do not want their resources exploited. They don't want the human rights of their people abused. They don't want their governance undermined. And ultimately, as a result, they really don't want Wagner. My question has to do with... There is a two-track uh, approach that are, and these tracks are pretty much joined, the Nairobi process and then the efforts that Angola is leading that led to an agreement in Luanda, where all sides made commitments to, in effect, uh, pull back and de-escalate the situation. And that's an important agreement. And if and as it's implemented, I think it offers tremendous promise for ending the, uh, the current conflict and hopefully leading to more durable stability in the uh, Eastern DRC. Um, now, a big part of that is M23 genuinely pulling back. And there, we are looking to Rwanda to use its influence with M23 to uh, encourage that and to move that forward. At the same time, any uh, militarized non-governmental group uh, needs to, to stand down. Uh, and that includes groups like the FDLR. And we're looking for all sides to use their influence to ensure that that happens. Rwandan forces uh, need to pull back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, we have uh, a very important uh, cessation of hostilities agreement that has led uh, over the last few weeks to a significant reduction in, in violence uh, in Tigray. Uh, the start of humanitarian assistance getting in in, in, a, in significant quantities, uh, the beginning of the restoration of services, and uh, we hope as well the um, need to verify with international monitors that uh, human rights abuses are no longer taking place. To make the case that the administration doesn't want to force African nations to choose. Another critical component of this agreement is for Eritrean forces to withdraw from Tigray. Uh, and we're looking uh, to that. And we're, I've had discussions with um, a number of the leaders who are here uh, about the need to, uh, to see that happen. One of the things that we're especially concerned about is the, the growth of untransparent debt, uh, including off-balance sheet debt and debt that's hidden by non-disclosure agreements. So a company or a country may come in, lend the, lend the money, and part of the agreement is that you can't reveal the terms. And that means, among other things, that when other countries are negotiating for loans, they don't know what the terms are. The people don't know what the terms are, and countries wind up being saddled with debt that they can't possibly repay. So that transparency that we bring to everything we do, we need to see that uh, spread around in the way that uh, these loans are made. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you.